So what was previously an empty transactional table here, if we go to the data viewer, we now see our asset scans, and here they are. Uh, and these then can be you know, independently stored as transaction logs or audit trails with a, with a kind of one-to-many relationship to this asset tag over time, meaning this was scanned on January 20th, maybe again on March 20th, um, keeping an audit trail, which is very important with um, you know, any of the asset tracking mandates, especially for publicly traded companies with uh, Sarbanes-Oxley and things like that. Um, or it could be just be a transaction that's processed into your system and dealt with accordingly. Maybe it updates the cubicle from 302 to 304. Uh, certainly in the case of, of asset A100, they want to do something to resolve this because there's an asset floating around that they, they don't really have an account for. Uh, but again, you can see that those, those records transferred over as we expected. Uh, so I think now would be an appropriate time to go back to desktop and talk a little bit about update source, uh, append if not found, and maybe even we can get into some of the other field types like calculated lookups. Um, so I'm going to go back at this point to Trace Plus Desktop and, and start from there. Okay, so here we have Trace Plus Desktop pretty much in the condition we left it. And again, uh, there's always been question about where you're designing in, in Desktop versus where you're designing in ODBC Link. Um, and just to make the point clear, Trace Plus Desktop is, is pretty much for designing the solution from a, from a data capture standpoint. And ODBC Link and Wireless Server and our Tracer Plus Connect products are designed from a, uh, also from a solution standpoint, but primarily for transferring of data. So you're des defining how you collect the data, how you collect the data in Trace Plus Desktop, and how you transfer the data in ODBC Link, Wireless Server, or Trace Plus Connect. And again, those are, those are typically separate webinars, so I won't, I won't go into those too much. Um, but what you saw, or what we just demonstrated, was how lookups work um, in a relatively simple way. Um, one thing I'd like to do is add or start explaining the feature, for example, um, update source. So in our previous example, um, and, I, and I, I should actually show it real quick, if we go, if we go in here and scan an asset and change its location, it's not necessarily going to change it in the master table. So let's do that really fast. A001 comes up as cube 302. I'm going to call it 302 changed. I'm going to submit that. So now I have a transaction that indicates the cubicle changed. But if I scan A001 again, it doesn't see that change because it hasn't been communicated back to the master table living locally on the device. So what I'm going to talk about now is just quickly how we can change that effect. Um, so let's go ahead and just exit that. Sorry for the quick little segue. Uh, so in this case, for current location, I'm going to say, well, if I do change the location, because it's not a read-only field, I should be allowed to change it, let's send that change back to the asset master. I'm going to turn on update source. Um, likewise, I could set the append if not found option, which means uh, in our previous example, we entered an asset of A100. Um, asset of A100, and it wasn't found. When I post it to my local transactional database, I can additionally post it to that master table. And that's one of those features that, you know what, 50% of the people cringe at and they say, no way would we want to mess with our master table. And the other 50% say, hey, that's, you know, that's exactly what we need. So, so, of course, our solution to that divide is to offer it as a user option. Uh, this is, you'll note, this is on a field by field level. Uh, in this case, it would be kind of redundant to put it in both places because they're both talking to the same uh, source session. The reason that's a field level setting is because these two fields could actually be doing lookups on totally different tables. Uh, you might have an item in your warehouse where you want to grab a current inventory level or a current inventory count from your from your um, live inventory table, and you might want to pull in also a, a unit price as a reference type field from your item master. And those those would be two lookups defined to two completely separate sessions. Uh, so again, just note that the only difference we made here is we turned on update source and we turned on append if not found. Um, and what we need to do now is deploy that over to, uh, over to the, our device. Okay, we have that uh, deployed over now. And, and, and one thing hopefully you can note is that with the introduction of Trace Plus Desktop, I don't know, about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, um, the practice of 
of sort of tweaking and testing, tweaking and testing, that cycle has been just made a lot easier. Because you see, I made those two, two quick little changes, and I went over and deployed it. And when we go to the device, you'll see those changes reflected. Um, I mean, that was always previously possible, but it just, just uh, tends to be a little bit faster now to, to kind of play around with those different settings. Uh, so, okay, again, in Trace Plus, we're going to go into our data entry tab. Um, we're going to do some data entry on our asset scans. And in this case, I will scan uh, A022, I think, was one of the existing assets. And I'm going to enter this, and I see that it's in Office 1. Um, this is really wrong. It's actually in Cube uh, 101. Okay, so again, this transaction was always recording that change. Um, but since we have that setting for update source turned on, what you'll see is if I come back the next time and scan A022, it has now updated from Office 1 to Cube 101. Um, and, and what's nice about that, too, is it keeps your local file a little bit more up to date. And in a, let's say, uh, it, in an inventory tracking type scenario, if you're doing receiving or shipping, keeping your running totals accurate um, you know, locally in a batch mode on your device is sometimes beneficial as opposed to having to synchronize you know, once, twice, three times a day. Um, and of course, any of those type scenarios are ir irrelevant if you're using our wireless server products because that's, that's going live. Um, and, and you know, the majority or, or the percentage of customers using wireless these days is definitely growing, but there's still uh, a very appropriate use case for the batch scenario. So, so the update source and the append if, not, uh, append if not found are still very much in use in this batch type environment. So there we see when I submit this record, um, we'll now have just two transactions uh, based on that same asset. And then again, what we'd want to do with these records is take them over and transfer them back to ODBC link. Um, and that would be it. So, so this little section we showed here is hopefully a pretty good indicator of how update source and append if not founds um, works as an additional sort of use uh, of lookups. Um, that, for the most part, covers, I would say, basic to mid-level uh, functionality of lookups. One thing I wanted to talk a little bit about also was um, calculated lookups. So there's a field type lookup, but there's also a uh, field type calculated lookup. And I think that would, that would make sense um, as a next step to talk about that. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and transfer our data over. Uh, let's go ahead and sync from device only. I'm just going to grab those eight transactions. <clears throat> okay, and what you see, we go to the data viewer. I think we had three previously. Maybe we synchronized again. I don't recall. So it's either 11 or 14 or so. Uh, let's see here. We have 11. So we have the, the, the existing three records and, then of course, any additional records. And again, these are transactional records, so there's not typically a uh, sort of unique requirement on the asset ID because it's it's expected in a sense that you're going to be scanning this asset, you know, maybe in January, maybe again in March, maybe again in uh, June. Yeah, depending on how you have that that audit type scenario set up. Um, so that's pretty much it. I think I think uh, the next step would really be to go ahead and talk about calculated lookups as um, just just one more step in the evolution of of how we've defined these lookups. <clears throat> 